Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So today I thought we would do a Q&A, but while I answer your questions, I was just gonna get ready for the day, do my makeup. So this is gonna be a very casual, sit down, chatty, slow, get all into the nitty gritty of all the questions and just sit as if we're literally all in the same room having coffee together as friends or tea or whatever you are drinking at the moment. So um, I'm currently, I made a nice tea. Well, actually I freshly brewed this tea yesterday and then I popped it in the fridge. It's getting warm here in Florida. We're supposed to have an 85 degree day starting off in a hoodie, of course, because the mornings are always very chilly, but we are gonna warm up. This is gonna be coming off. Um, if you hear chainsaws, lawn mowers, saw blade across the street, leaf blowers. Also in Florida, it is that season where everybody's outside, including Larry. He's like trimming a tree in the backyard. Liam is taking his nap. So it's the perfect opportunity for me to sit down and have girl talk with you guys. So this is probably going to be a longer video. Thank you so much for all of your questions as well. It is currently Friday as I am filming this video. I need to edit it today so that you can see it first thing tomorrow morning. So. Okay, first things first, and I will list all the products that I am using on my face down below. Let's try this tea. It's like a ginger mint green tea like concoction. Very refreshing. Okay, the first question is, any planned trips coming? So I did make some phone calls yesterday to try and book like a summery beach trip. So that is in the works, but I don't know because my life, our family's life right now is so up in the air and I don't know what's going on with IVF. So I can't really book anything or plan anything at the moment. But what I'm doing essentially is figuring out, I want to do kind of like a midsummer, end of summer um, beach trip with Liam and Larry. Uh, we did a beach vacation last year. Liam was eight months old and he loved it, but also he was really into his teething era and it wasn't, we had moments where it was great and moments where he was like, just wanting to be not on the beach. So I think this time would be so different. He's 19 months, he'll be two in August. And I feel like he would love like sitting in the sand and digging and like playing with the toys and stuff like that. So in the works is, I am really bad at talking and doing my makeup and stuff. So is this gonna, well, we'll see how I do. We're thinking about it. Mm. Hold on. Mm. This is the first time I'm using this. This is very refreshing. It's a vitamin C wake up mist. Um, I was gifted it by Pixie. That is very refreshing. I like that. So right now I'm calling around seeing where we would like to stay. I always like to go towards the Atlantic side just because we live on the Gulf side. Anyways, that is what I am looking into location and prices. And we really, really enjoyed Vero Beach last time. So that's kind of where we're looking at at the moment. Let me know if you guys have any trips coming up and what you have planned. What's your go-to snack at the moment? Ooh. Good question, because a lot of you know I'm having the issues, stomach issues. <sighs> My go-to snack, like generally guys, honestly, <laughs> potato chips, lightly salted Lay's potato chips, pickle, my majestic dill pickles, and I know that is not at all healthy, or fresh fruit. I am in a massive fresh fruit kick. It's all I want, it's cold, it's refreshing, it's light. But like if I'm sitting on the couch in the evenings watching a show with Larry, unfortunately, it's like all up in the potato chips and pickle zone. Like <laughs> I am craving all the salt in the evening and that's just the honest truth. But I feel like I always start off the day really healthy and really well and balanced and then the evening, it just goes wild. What is your go-to snack? The next one is, has your PGT test results for the embryo come back yet? No. So they said, they told me seven to 10 days since I got my last update. My last update was last Thursday. So I started counting the days and I'm like, okay, so if it's regular days, counting weekends, then that would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as of yesterday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So somewhere between this Thursday and Monday. 
that I should get an update, but they don't make phone calls on the weekend. So I'm thinking it's most likely gonna be business days, which is gonna put us at sometime next week, anywhere from like Monday to next Friday. And let me tell you, I am just like, I don't wanna say I've put it out of my mind because I almost feel like this is, kind of, okay, it's stressful, right? But if it's bad news, I feel better right now because I don't know. <laughs> Does that make any sense? It's kind of like when you're waiting for those results and you're praying and hoping for the best, but if it's bad, it's almost like I don't wanna know, but also you need to know so that you can plan your future and figure out what the heck is going on and what to do next. Um, so to answer the question that you asked, no, I don't have those results, but you guys know as soon as I do, because I know a lot of you are waiting and just like being so hopeful and sweet and praying for little Nemo, that's its little nickname, and hoping for the best, just as much as we are over on this end. And the wait, the wait, oh, the wait. I don't love the wait, but we all have to wait for results. It's just how it goes. We would all love to you know, know immediately, but, that is not how the cookie crumbles. Do you know what I forgot, guys? I forgot to get my setting powder, which I definitely need because if I, I don't, I know a lot of girls don't have to use a setting powder, but I definitely do. Boom. All right, I am back. I'm almost out. Of, these last forever. It's the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, but I am getting low. I ran and I'm out of breath. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm really almost out. Guys, should I get another? This is my second one of these. This is like all I ever use. I love the Maybelline Fit Me translucent powder the compact but i was thinking about getting the charlotte tilbury one i've seen it applied and it looks like it blurs like magic okay next question how do lexi and liam get along my kitties mostly steer clear of my 17 month old boy yes so unfortunately we've had two very minor incidents more of like the kitty like lexi warning liam like stay back so she has swatted at him twice hissed at him once and she was on the couch and he would run up to her and kind of like poke or like stick his finger like in her nose to like touch her lightly and she wasn't having it so she hissed at him and he oh guys it was so pitiful he turned and he looked at Liam and Liam Larry and I and he stuck out his bottom lip and he cried he got his little feelings hurt I felt so bad um but now ever since that happened yes Lexi stays clear of him but he also knows like if he's near Lexi he'll like look at her and kind of laugh and smile and like point to her like yep that's Lexi but he's he kind of steers clear of her too but she has moments where she's like super protective and she'll sit right where he's playing and flinging things and she doesn't care so it's like she wants to be near him but at the same time she's a cat and she's like don't look at me don't breathe on me don't touch me but also, hi, I wanna be next to you and you're cute. So kind of all over the board there with that. It's really funny. Uh, will you discuss what you thought about the February book? Okay, so I have to tell you guys the truth. I'm sure you guys already know, which is why you haven't heard me talk about the February book. This was my February read. I started the book club. So you would think that I would have finished it. I am halfway through our February read. Guys, and what I'm gonna say about it is February was a month for me where I did not prioritize reading. And that's really what I wanna work on is prior prioritizing reading. And it was just one of those really hectic months with doing the shots and stuff. And I am not using it as an excuse, but two weeks of the shots and like driving out to the clinic and um, any time that I wasn't at the clinic, I was, you know, I was just, my time was invested elsewhere and I didn't prioritize it. So I don't usually read during the day. I only read like at night when I lay down at night. That's when I read just because I, I have things to do in the house. You know, when Liam goes down for the nap, I wanna clean, I wanna film, I need to edit, stuff like that. So um, I didn't prioritize it. When I laid my head down at night, I was exhausted. I couldn't even. And then truth be told, if I did have the time and I was lying awake at night, I was scrolling on my phone instead of reading, which really sucks because I really try not to do that. And I'm back at doing what I love to do. And that's when we walk into the bedroom, I plug it in, I flip it upside down. It doesn't exist to me until the next day. So I am still reading it. I'm double reading what I gather so far. I mean, it is a spicy read, by the way. Um, what I'm gathering so far though is like, 
there's a communication issue between the two of these characters and it obviously we know that they spend time apart like years and years and years and years so obviously there was something that happens or some kind of a communication breakdown so what i'm kind of gathering from this is in a relationship speak your mind say your feelings no matter what like don't be ashamed or scared or afraid to like speak up and say what you really feel when it comes to your feelings so that's what i'm gathering out of this book so far let me know what you guys think um, and then as far as like not finishing it, I think it's okay. Like even you guys, like if you're reading a book and it's not for you and you're like, yeah, I'm going to skip out on this read. I, I'm not enjoying the book. Don't force yourself to read it. Like, just don't read it. I enjoy the book. I really like the book. It's just, I didn't prioritize, um, my time for reading. So I'm back on track and we're doing good. So I am still going to finish it. But now I feel like I was telling my friends at that dinner, I said, I feel like I'm in school all over again. And I just was late on an assignment and now I have double the work because I didn't finish my assignment on time, which is so funny, but that's that's truly how I felt. But let me know in the comments below what you thought of our February read. Did you enjoy it? Have you thought about getting a Kindle? I've loved reading on mine. So yeah, I did. Actually, when my friend Hillary came to visit, when was that guys? Was that last May? Oh, I can't see my mirror, it's too far away. Was that last May that she came to visit? I don't even know if I filmed while she was here. Did I? Hmm. I, I don't know. I'll have to look into that, see if I did. But um, she had a Kindle and I was talking to her about it and it sounds really nice. I try to stay away from screens as much as I can because, you know, we are on our phones a lot or our computers. And I love the traditional sense of opening a book and like reading the page. But I also think I would thrive on a Kindle a little bit more like reading and scanning and stuff like that. Um, so if you have a Kindle, let me know. How do you feel about it? Do you love your Kindle? I'm also a huge fan of Audible and audiobooks. So although our book of the month books, I've not downloaded any of them on Audible. Um, I was listening to Harry Potter on Audible on the way to and from my appointments in February. So I could have downloaded that book, but I was like, no, I want to read it. And then, hello, I didn't finish it. So that was lame, but... Um, let me know if you have a Kindle, if you love it, what you prefer. Do you prefer your Kindle over the book? Do you prefer like an actual physical book to read or do you prefer audiobooks? How is it going with the new coffee? Do you think you'll go back to the other coffee? Yeah, so coffee. And a lot of you guys were asking about the water. Let me rewind. So I had posted over on Instagram, if you follow over there, that I knew something was wrong with our water. Since we moved into this house, it just smells like pure chemical. It smells like chlorine. It's just very strong chemical smelling. I smell it the most in the guest bathroom when I'm bathing Liam is when I can smell it the most or when I have finished like a big jug of my water and I unscrew the cap. I'm like, oh my gosh, it smells like straight chlorine. Like I'm drinking straight out of the pool. And I wanna say, I'm noting here now, so that this doesn't get taken out of context. I am very thankful to live in America and have clean drinking water. Very thankful, so I'm not saying that, but let me grab Liam's washcloth and show you guys what our water did to his washcloth. Here was a gray washcloth. Gray as in the color that it is around in this area. I usually, as soon as he's done with a bath, I will take the washcloth and throw it in the laundry. I let it sit out for four days. And when I went to go clean it and grab it and do a load of laundry, I was like, our drinking water, our bathing water, the water that I'm putting in our food and cooking with bleached a freaking towel. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I saw that and I called, I was like, uh-uh. So we called a company, they came out and they tested the water and there is supposed to be some levels of chlorine in your water, of course, but we had like moderate, too much that is what, moderate levels, but too much to what's supposed to be in your water. So we're having like this whole filter system put in, it'll be on the outside of the house and filter everything that's coming in through the house. Florida has hard water to begin with, but yeah, I was really shocked by that. So somebody had asked, do they think that it was the water here that set me off and not the coffee? Um, and the answer is no, actually, because I went to Universal with my mom back in January, December. I think it was December. 
around Christmas time. And we stopped early in the morning at Starbucks on our way to the park. And I, I was sick at the park. I was having to run to the actual like clinic at Universal and get Tums that wasn't working. I was miserable having moments of misery. So it's something that I've always dealt with my stomach issues, but it was random, right? And as I'm getting older, it's more frequent. Uh, it's like all the time now, it's every single day. I am noticing limiting the coffee is helping and I'm also noticing the way I'm drinking it is helping. So I used to like wake up in the morning, first thing, have my cup of coffee with my creamer, boom, and I would have an issue as of lately. So what I'm doing now and I can tolerate it, I had an issue with the coffee, the new one. I was like, okay, so I don't drink it like I normally do anymore. I literally put it in a smoothie, blend it with a banana, some protein powder, and I seem to be fine with that. It, sh it sounds like I can't have it on an empty stomach or by itself. It needs to be diluted in order for me to tolerate it. So it's going well, and I am really watching like the pasta that I'm eating. I'm trying, and it's so, I never thought, I'm trying to eat essentially with my pastas and breads like gluten-free i am not an expert in this category i don't know i'm not self-diagnosing but i am getting the, i loved the barilla um i think that's the brand the protein pasta you guys saw me talk about it i was so excited it was giving me the worst stomach aches every time i was eating it and i'm like okay so i've started buying um the gluten-free pastas and oats and kind of like stuff like that and it seems to be working so i don't know I have not even tried cottage cheese. I'm terrified just because these stomach aches are so bad. Anyways, and thank you all for your recommendations and your support. And a lot of you seem to be having similar issues too. I just think as we're getting older, maybe we just can't tolerate the foods that we once did. Also spicy. I haven't added hot sauce or crushed red pepper flakes to any of my meals in months, like a month or two since this started being very consistent. My throat is gurgling. Um, how do you stay positive while trying to get pregnant? Hmm. Guys, honestly, you got to pull yourself out of your head and that's a hard thing to do. Especially when you've been let down or you've had negatives or you've had results that you were not hoping for, right? So trying to pull yourself out of your head and trying to just take it day by day and task at a time and focusing on things that make you genuinely happy, whether that's getting out for fresh air, going out for a walk, picking up a book. I think a lot of time that's why a lot of us love fiction books and diving into a world that isn't ours in a way. It's like, it's an escape and you're entering into a different world. And yeah, I don't know. Um, I also want to say don't when you're going through a hard time don't try to be super positive don't try to like swallow that upset and those tears and just be like it's fine it it, it will be when it's meant to be like just let your feelings feel like if you want to cry girl cry because I have been there and I have cried I have cried crocodile tears I have cried so hard that your your chin and your lip quiver okay just let it out it's gonna feel better if you just let it out um and talk to people don't keep it in like i really find it helpful to just you know call my mom or angelo or my friend that's also going through f ivf talking to larry just like talking it out talking to you guys like it's so helpful finding communities of other people that are also going through it and reading their stories it's like there's so many people that are going through the struggle and I try to stay positive and I just try to take it day by day, but that doesn't mean that you should never allow yourself to have tears or have moments where you're not feeling so positive. A lot of us don't live in like this super happy positive bubble like all day, 24 seven. I am generally a positive thinking kind of person. I always try to look at the best opportunity but I've also never been completely in, in the pregnancy world, like shut down where it's like, there's nothing you can do. You can't, you know, get pregnant and you can't try. I think that would be hard and very difficult to come to terms with. What I'm trying to say is like, I still have a chance. I still have an opportunity. And if I, if my opportunity closed and it was not possible, um, I would probably be sitting here saying something different. I think you have to go through an experience to like completely understand and 
I don't know. It's just, it's hard for me to like put into words. I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but if any of you are going through it, I do, I do get it. And I really do understand, but no, it's you like, you don't have to have it all together all the time. You don't have to be positive all the time. You can be angry, man. Like let yourself be freaking frustrated. Like there's times where it's like, why? Like you just want to be like, you know what I mean? And let yourself have that. And once you've had that and you go through your process of grief and your process of frustration or whatever it is, and you're ready to like accept and then like step forward, see this is all the lawn equipment is coming out, then do that. But like definitely go through all the stages. Don't just try to be, oh, it's fine. Everything's great. Cause I swear if you are in that world of it's fine and everything's great 24 seven, you're gonna lose it. Kind of been there okay um also want to reach out and give you all hugs all of my sisters i love you so much and giving you all big hugs and it doesn't even have to be like in the ivf world or trying to get pregnant world this is like everything like trying to have it all together all the time that is when you're gonna explode and lose it i swear like i just there's a lot of stressors in life a lot of stuff that people don't share and people don't talk about and you can do it. That's what I'm going to say is you can do it one day at a time, one task at a time. That's what I always try to focus on and find things that make you happy. <laughs> Read books, takes walks, talk to people, takes walks. You guys know, catching my drift, catching my drift. Ooh, top three YouTubers. This is a great one. I have two. Okay. Zoe Sugg, obviously she is my favorite YouTuber like forever of all time, forever and ever. And then Darling Desi. I love her videos like seasonally i just find her storytelling i will link them down below and she's just so magical in the way that she speaks it's just so fantasy she's very like cottagey very seasonal and just generally just so sweet like a fairy tale and it's just great i love it i love it i love her seasonal stuff she gives like book recommendations crafts and stuff that you can do during certain seasons and just like living in the moment in that season. And I just really like that. I, um, so those are my two, those, those are the two that I can think of offhand that I gravitate towards. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else, but those are my two that I would say that I really like. Oh, I like Sarah's day too. I really like her channel as well. So I like keeping up with her life and what's going on and her world and she's fun. And yeah, those are my three. Those are my top three. What is one thing you look forward to doing with Liam that you haven't done? I say Disney, like taking him to Disney and having him see all of that magic. I know there's a lot of controversy and stuff right now with Disney and stuff. Um, and I try to just live like, I don't know, I'm aware, but I try to be I try to give him that childhood that's just pure and magic and filled with love, even though I am aware and I know that there are things happening around us. But I, I would say that and just like traveling, we have traveled mildly, like not enough, I would say with him. It's, it's expensive to travel and we just haven't got to do it as much, which is why I always try to book like one trip a year that we can do, whether it's in the fall or like a beach vacation, just watching him explore the world around him and see new things is my absolute favorite he is just flourishing and i love seeing oh, i just i love seeing everything that he does every single day it just warms my heart and i just love the little human that he is and so to answer the question i mean yeah disney of course just him seeing things that he loves and enjoys we have another lawnmower truck pulling up guys like it is lawnmower day up in here on this friday how do you make life look flawless? Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> thank you. But here's the thing guys, it's not, it is not. My house is like a mess at times. I have boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. Um, emotionally, like I'm good and I'm great, but I also have a lot going on in here, a lot going on where I'm all over the board. I'm very thankful for my life and I'm just trying to slow down. That's what I'm trying to do. I also don't, I don't know. I just, flawless, no guys. I don't want you ever to, to think that life is just so 
perfect, but I also try to make it as best as I can, like make it what it is. I think as I'm getting older too, like I wanna surround myself around good people, positive people, sweet people. Like we only, sorry about that. I had somebody at the door. So anyways, um, let's go to the next questions. Oh, any thoughts on the Kate Middleton conspiracies? So what I wanna say about this is like, none of us, this is how I always approach a story or anything that goes on in life, a rumor. Look, at the end of the day, we will never know. You will never know the truth of what's going on in somebody's life, whether they wanna give you a detail or not, and whether you will never have the full story. Anything is possible. This is just how I view every single thing. You may not agree with that, but like if you were to tell me aliens exist, I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, you're crazy, no. Like I'll be like, yeah, it's possible, but you're never really gonna know unless we see them, right? So with the Kate Middleton situation, I know what from what I've heard is that she underwent a procedure. So maybe she's healing, maybe she's taking time, maybe she doesn't wanna be out in the public, maybe she's just having a moment, you know what I mean? So, and it's almost like the more that people say and attack and like push, um, it's not gonna matter. Like they're gonna come out when they're ready to come out. Like you will find out when you'll find out. The truth will come out when it is meant to come out. I just, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like I, cause I've seen the posts and I've seen like people going on and on and saying stuff. And I'm like, oh guys, but like, you're almost wasting your breath because you'll never, you'll never really know until they come out with their statement. So just like, it'll be what it is, you know? That's how I just approach everything in life. Going back to the aliens, you know, you want to sit down and tell me that there's aliens? There very well could be, we don't know. Maybe we do know. It could happen, it may not happen. <laughs> like that's just, I'm just an open thinker. I'm a free thinker and I just, anything's possible in my world. Like that's how I think. And a lot of us all think differently. So I'm open to whatever. What activities do you do with Liam? I need ideas. So Liam is an active little guy until he wants to sit down and look through his books and look at his books. But if like, if I sit down with like pen and paper, not pen, but crayons and paper, like he'll run up and like put a line on there and he'll do it for a little while, but then he's off. He's gotta be doing things. So he's more of like an outdoor activities person. So we go to the park, we do library time, where we'll go to a library that's local, we'll do story time and stuff like that. And that's pretty much what we do. Otherwise we, we have like open play is what he does a lot. Um, but now that the weather's getting warmer, he loves like exploring the lanai. We have the pool fenced in, so there's no worries there, but I can't wait to like put little bins out and fill them with water and like have activities in there. And Angela got him a bath bomb and I can't use it in the bath with him because of his skin, but inside this dinosaur bath bomb, there's like a toy inside of it. And I thought on the lanai, that would be really fun. Like we can put a bin, fill it with water and like drop a bath bomb in there and he can watch it and kind of play in that kind of way. So I don't know, what do you guys do with your toddlers? We just try to go out on walks as much as possible, which <laughs> brings me to the attention of the last vlog. A lot of people were quite upset that I had Liam in the pack and play when we were outside. I was gardening like nails and hands deep in mud and dirt. And Larry was cutting fencing out and like rolling new and eye screening in. So we were both very hands-on at the moment. He was running around when I was chasing him around, but as I was knee deep in stuff, like yes, I had him in the pack and play. We live in the woods. We also live where there's possibly bears, possibly whatever. And I'm hands deep in, in dirt and like sand and stuff. And he was super content and happy and looking at his books in the pack and play. Like, do I force my child to only stay in the pack and play and don't let him roam around ever? No guys, <laughs> like he roams around and plays, but like, to allow me to get 30 minutes in to plant my flowers. Yes, I put him in the pack and play. I knew he was safe. I knew he was occupied and he was happy in there. He had his snacks, he had his water, he had his books, like he was content. If he was screaming, crying and miserable, like no, I wouldn't keep him in there. And no, my gardening would wait another day. But yes, he was running around after I was finished. He was running around, you know, beforehand and he gets plenty of time outside. I do not keep him in the pack and play 24 seven, I promise. But again, you saw like, it was so funny because when you look back at that clip, I explained what I was doing and you see a clip of like 
five seconds of Liam in a pack and play and it's like, but you never let him run around outside. And it's like, man, it's just crazy how like you see, this is why you take everything in life with a grain of salt. Anything you hear, anything you see, you're not seeing the full story. You're not seeing the full picture. You're seeing a moment. You're seeing, you know, in the Kate Middleton thing, you're seeing a statement, you're seeing a moment. Like it is interesting, but I think people are making it more interesting and making it more of something than what it really is. Maybe she's dealing with health issues, you know? You, know, you, just, you just don't know what's going on with somebody's life. But anyways, that's what I do with Liam at the moment. So what do you do? Like activities that you do. He also likes Miss Rachel. We do watch Miss Rachel every now and then, but I try to not have any TV time. I do not do TV time in the mornings. Um, we do play time in the morning specifically and morning walks in the morning with nature. That's what we do in the mornings. And then he'll have his afternoon nap, which one of the other questions was, does Liam still take two naps a day? He does not. We got rid of the two naps a day and we are on one nap a day. Um, and that can range anywhere from like an hour to sometimes could be like up to three hour nap. But most of the time it's like an hour to an hour and a half as generally safe to say. In fact, I think he's waking up, which means I need to get hustling. Tips for growing YouTube. Um, I just think sometimes like the algorithm is wild on YouTube. And I think sometimes like they'll push out a video or a video that they find interesting and it just pops off. That's what happened to me. I was very lucky. That's how I look at it. I filmed a video with Larry introducing him. And like, because before that I just did um, like unboxings and like things that I enjoyed and stuff like that. But man, the time I introduced Larry and age gap relationship, which is what caught everybody's eye, YouTube decided to push that video out and I got like hundreds of thousands of views on that video. Um, and that's kind of what got us out there. And then to come off of that, like pretty much consistency and like engaging with your your followers, I would say definitely do that. So be consistent with your uploads and be yourself, like be vulnerable, be who you are. And no matter what, like don't, don't try to be somebody else or something else, just let yourself be. I know that can be a hard thing to do because you're putting a video out there for so many people, like so many different kinds of people too, like that have different belief systems and Sometimes we're all afraid to offend or say something that'll offend somebody. And I am careful with that. And, but I'm also a very, like, like I told you, like a very broad thinker too. And I'm a very open thinker and a non-judgmental individual. Like I, I don't judge anybody because I'm not walking in their shoes. Like when you start to tell me a story or something that you did and you're like, oh, you're going to judge me. Like, no, I'm not because I'm not you. And unless you tell me like you've murdered somebody, yes, then I'm proud. <laughs> That's a different story, obviously, but in general, when you're telling me about a hardship that you're going through and something that you did or the way that you reacted, like either we've all been there, we may be there one day, we've never been there, but we may experience it one day. You just never know. So anyways, that is my tip is be you, be yourself, be open, be vulnerable, be consistent be kind. What is your favorite thing to hear, see, and smell in your backyard? Ooh, that's a great question. So currently, currently we have citrus trees blossoming and oh my gosh, the flowers on those citrus trees are just the most magical spring thing ever. My favorite thing to see is either Liam playing out in the yard or birds, like birds flying around and chirping and the squirrels playing. That is just so fun to me. Um, hear, see, and smell. Oh, I did smell. I said see. What? Hear. Oh, birds. Like, see it and hear it, I guess is my favorite thing. I missed the video, Why is Luna with your neighbors? Guys, so many of you guys have missed that. I've explained it probably a handful of times, so some of you guys are probably tired of me saying it. The very quick version, because I know a lot of you have already known, and like, Lexi and Luna were not the best living mates. We tried for a long time. Both of them were on psych meds to be able to live with each other. So... Um, my mom took Luna in for a couple of months and then our neighbors were asking for a cat. Like, do you know a cat? Do you have a cat? Blah, 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 blah. And I said, yes, I have the perfect cat. And now Luna lives with our neighbors. That is the full story of what had happened. So my mom was like foster mommy to Luna. 
um, until we found her, her forever home and her forever home is right next door. So I posted a little video of her over on Instagram when we went to go visit the other day, but that is the very quick version because I've explained it a lot. But if you missed it, that is where Luna is. She lives next door. What hair products do you use for little man? Three of my kids have curly hair. I have to be very careful with any product that I put on Liam because he has extremely sensitive skin. So I literally use the Dove Unscented Shampoo and Body Wash. It's like an all-in-one thing. I bought him the Dove Conditioner for his curls because his hair is getting longer and his curls will like not up and he reacted to it. So I need to find a fragrance-free conditioner, a fragrance-free tangle spray for his hair. Everything has to be fragrance-free over here. So we're really boring in that sense. So if you guys know of something, let me know. What helped you process the grief of the passing of your last transfer? That is a really good question and time. Time is the answer for that. It just becomes more of like you look back at it and you're like, gosh, I would be, <clears throat> you know, this many months pregnant and I would be going through this stage and that stage. And you think about that from time to time. Um, it does get better with time time heals it but you still think back to it and you still wonder what if and you still wonder what if I would have done this differently or that differently or maybe it just that wasn't meant to be for whatever reason but I think just time helps and I think back to that shooting star that I saw that one night the night um before I found oh god I shouldn't have touched that till it dried um that shooting star and I'm I'm just I'm like I haven't seen a shooting star since I saw it that night, the night before my appointment, the night before we found out the results. And when I saw that shooting star, I made a wish and prayed that the little embryo would make it and be okay. Obviously that was not my results. The embryo was not okay and it did not make it. So you kind of have like that disappointment and sadness and anger and just frustration that the wish didn't work. But then when you look at it a little bit differently, it's like maybe that was God's way or the world's way of saying, you know, I'm okay and you're going to be okay too. So time makes things better. It doesn't make it easier. It doesn't make it go away, but time helps in all, in all things, guys, grief, trauma, situations, health, Sometimes, as long as it's not a terminal illness and getting worse and worse and worse, like there's just so many things. Best advice for someone who's about to give birth for their first baby. Ah, congratulations, so exciting. So the advice that I would give is very much go with the flow. Um, speak up for yourself, let them know when you're in pain, like talk to them, be vocal. I had an amazing team, like amazing nurses, amazing doctors. I would just say, just yeah go with the flow don't go in with like these expectations of this is exactly what i want this is exactly how it's gonna be because sometimes labor and delivery does not go that way so try to be like also breathe oh my gosh try to breathe do not eat something intense right before you go in i know sometimes you can't help that because you could be at home having lunch and then your water breaks and you need to go in i was induced so because my fluid was really low and Liam was, you know, kind of at, he was not kind of, but he was at risk. So they wanted to get him out, which is why I was induced. But they were like, yeah, you're not even close. You're going to be here for a while. So I was like, babe, please just God, I need some real food. Like the hospital wasn't my vibe. I need some food. And there was a subway in the hospital. So he got me a subway and I had a pizza sub loaded with sauce and cheese and Italian bread, like all this stuff. I had the worst acid reflux and I went into labor right then and there right after eating that stuff so try to eat light if you can plan for that but enjoy the moment just breathe through it like you are about to become a mama and it's the most well you're already a mom you're already carrying your baby you're already a mommy but gosh your life is just it, everything you are gonna know such a pure love oh it's insane like I look at all children differently I love children, pre Liam. I loved children. I cared for children and I, I you know, but I didn't look at, like I didn't, I, you look at it so differently when you have one of your own. It's like all children are your children. Like they're just the sweetest little souls in the world and they're so pure and loving and innocent. You also have such a respect for parents and what they go through. And you see a mom in the parking lot struggling. You know what, for example, like, oh, I'm getting off tangent. 
enjoy the process of labor. Enjoy every moment of it. I know it could be painful. Girl, if you need that epidural, get that epidural. I got the epidural. There's no shame there. I went for it. It was lovely. It was very lovely. And just try to enjoy the process and soon you will be hugging and holding your little bundle of joy. Ask for help afterwards too. Like if you need help with, if you plan to breastfeed, great. If you don't and you do formula, great. Just use them in the hospital as a resource as much as you can. So um, also if you're still home, try to get as much sleep, take those naps, honey, take those naps. Anyways, seeing parents too. I, I don't know, like there was this mom in this Target parking lot and she had an infant in a car seat and we pulled, we were parked right next to each other. Liam and Larry and I were pulling up, loading our stuff in the car and she could not get the car seat out of the stroller. And I looked at her a few times and I'm like, oh, is she going to be weirded out if I ask if she needs help? Because like, also you're approaching a mother and her baby, but also like she's really struggling and maybe she would really need some help, but she doesn't want to ask. And I was like, do you need help getting her out? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes, please. Thank you so much. And I, ha the, the, she did explain to me the car seat basically didn't go with the base and it was really difficult to get out, but I just felt for her. And I don't know pre Liam if I would have even wrapped my head around it and like looked at her and I was like, oh my gosh, that is a mama who was having such a hard time and is struggling and I'm sure she's getting overwhelmed and anxious and she has her baby and it's stuck and she can't get the baby out of the thing to put the baby in the car. Anyways, I think it's this whole thing that when you're a mom, it's like you have all of these things that run through your head and you just want all moms to have the best experience that they can because it is, it can be stressful at times and we can go through it at times. Anyway, I told you guys this was gonna be like a sisters having sit down chat kind of conversation. If this embryo is non-viable, will you do another egg retrieval? I have to talk to the doctor about that. I told you guys I'm in that shared risk program and I think it does come with a number of egg retrievals until like they stop trying. I don't know how many that is. I have to look into that. The only situation that I didn't bear in mind that I didn't think about is like, I have to pay for those shots again. So if this embryo is a non-viable embryo, like I can do the process again, but I have to pay for the anesthesia again. I have to pay for the like procedure part and I have to pay for those medications. And just for context, the medications for egg retrieval prep, those stomach shots are $5,000. <laughs> It's not funny. So it's like, I didn't take that into the consideration of like, I just didn't think it would be possible because last time this was not the case. It's not the case right now either because we don't have the results. It just, I don't know guys, it's a whole whirlwind. We'll see. Can you share more recipes and meals that you make for Liam? I need inspo for my two year old. Honestly, I have a very picky eater on my hands guys. So, I, what I try to do is I always give him what we're having, like a taste of it. You guys already know, like Larry and I are different eaters in general. So sometimes we have different meals anyway. So I try to get, give him what I'm having. Um, and then he always has something on his plate that he loves to eat. So he loves fruits, fresh fruits and stuff like that. I always try to make sure he has a protein. So if he loves Greek yogurt, I always add like the um, no sugar added peanut butter in there just to add some more. He loves those Annie's bunnies. And then, yeah, I just, guys, I'm kind of simple. Like we all know I'm not a chef, an amazing cook. I try, uh, but he does not love meat. So I just think I like to follow a lot of like Pinterest ideas and stuff like that. And then I'll like go and make this really awesome thing. And I try to give it to him and he hates it. And he doesn't want it and doesn't touch it. And I'm like, oh man, I just spent like an hour making that and you don't love it. <laughs> but I think that's part of it. And I think it's something that they'll outgrow eventually, right? So or maybe he just doesn't have the taste for that and he'll never really like it. But just having patience and just making sure that they're getting something, we're trying our best. I try to focus on making sure he's getting protein and like balanced, balanced meals as much as possible. He hates eggs, but to be honest, I don't blame him. I don't like eggs. I try to eat them, but now I'm like, I just told Larry the other day, I'm like, I don't even like eggs. I don't know why I'm trying to eat them. They make me gag. So that's probably why he doesn't like them. But again, that's one of those things where I just try to go with the flow. I'm very thankful that he loves fresh fruit. I mean, all the fruits, like he could pound a whole thing of blueberries 
strawberries. He loves watermelon. He loves all of those things. When is embryo transfer day? So tentatively, if this embryo goes well, like is well and like perfectly healthy and we are able to transfer this embryo, it would be sometime in April. But right now everything is up in the air. So we'll see. Do you know the gender of the embryo? So we have the choice to know. So they, yes, with this genetic testing that we are required to do, they first of all see like the chromosomes, like all the chromosomes, is it normal, blah, blah, blah. And then obviously you get to see if the gender is male or female. So then you have the choice to find out. So we could either decide, no, we don't wanna know because it's only one embryo, or if you're really wanting to know, you are able to find out. Okay, and then the last question is, we're gonna end on a simple one. How do you keep your teeth so white? Also, thank you. So what I do, is those Crest 3D Brilliant White Strips. I just do those like once every two to three months probably. And that's that's really about it. That's what I do for my teeth. I do drink a, well, I did drink a lot of coffee and tea and stuff like that. So I have noticed they're not as white <laughs> as they used to be, but I think the Crest 3D Strips help. I can't use them. Like they say on there, use every day for like seven days. Heck, no, my teeth would hurt so bad. I have very sensitive teeth. So I use mine like once a month if I'm feeling it, but they're really, really pricey. So I use them once every three months and I just kind of go from there and that's what I do. Cheers guys. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me, getting ready with me, talking about all the things. Liam is officially up from his nap. So I'm gonna grab him. We're gonna get some lunch and I will see you guys again in the next one. Bye.